Hello Knitters, this is Cindy Dell. We are on our last block of the Building Blocks Block of the Month class. Very exciting. Um, so I'm going to do a little demonstration for you on the technique, the new technique that we've got in the block. But I also want to talk a little bit about the complexity of the block. I think the block is complex for you, not, not because of the new stitch, but because of the way it's written and because of having to worry about your markers all the time. So as you remember, I have sent you all an alternative block. <clears throat> this is called the Vine Lace. This is a chart that I made and it's it's very, very beautiful. It's just a, a simple knit two together and then yarn overs over here and slip slip knit. And it kind of changes position all the way up and down the block. This is what it looks like. This is one of my favorite lace patterns. It's very organic looking to me, but you can see this is where the yarn overs are. Oh, it's very, very pretty. This has exactly the same number of stitches and rows as our block, so it's gonna work out just fine. It also has a, a one stitch starter column here that's always knit. And then the next stitch is always a knit two together. And then what changes are where you place the yarn overs. It's really simple and it's just beautiful. So if you'd rather do that block, feel free. Um, I just thought it was just as beautiful, but it's just a little bit less complex. So now we come to my version of the, um, the building block number 12. This is Leafy Lace. Um, there's a new stitch in here. It's We have one right here on row seven and one here on row 15. And the instructions on how to do that is right here. Don't worry about the wrong side, just the right side. It's a slip two as if to knit, knit one, and then pass those two stitches over the, the one that you just knit. And I'll show you how to do that couple other things I want to tell you about the chart. We've only really had one chart, so I want to make sure that you you understand how these work. In your chart, you have a colored line around this entire box here. That is what you're calling a repeat. So what that means is every time you have a, a line, a red line, you're going to place a marker. And then between those lines is where you repeat. This first stitch is never repeated. It's only done once. That's the same on this chart, by the way. The difference is on row seven, you have to remove your marker before you do this stitch because you're knitting these two together. That's the only time that it changes. So. That's a, that can be difficult for someone who really depends on their markers and they don't want to have to move them. In this case, you're going to have to move it, but only on row seven. And it's worth it if, if you like the look of it. And also just a little bit of extra instruction on lace. If you recall, it's, it has to be balanced. And in th this case, it's a symmetrical or mirrored look. So what happens on this side is the mirror of this. So we happen to have this. In this book, this is the very same stitch. In fact, I think the author probably got her patterns from this book. But you can see that it mirrors whatever happens here Whatever happens on this side is also happening on this side, and it looks like a mirrored image. <coughs> Excuse me. So, what I'm going to do now 
I show you how to work this block. I have worked the first four stitches of the border. So I want to place a marker there. And what that does is tell me I don't, that's the end of my border. Then I'm going to look here on row or column one, the first stitch. You can see it here too. We're on row 15. I'm going to knit that stitch. And I'm going to place another marker. And that tells me this is the beginning of my, my 10 row repeat, 10 stitch repeat, sorry. So on this row 15, we're going to always start with a yarn over. Yarn over. And knit three. One, two, three. We have a split stitch here, so I'm going to correct that before I start. Now we're going to do what's called the central double decrease. It's this one right here. You slip two as if to knit, knit one, and pass two over that. We have two in the pattern. We have one on row seven and one on row 15. Mm -hmm. This is a beautiful stitch and it's actually very easy to accomplish. So you, you're going to insert your needles as if you're gonna knit those two together from the front to the back, just like if you were gonna knit two, but you're not gonna knit it. You just slip it off and you can see what this does is it changes the position of the stitches. This stitch was, would have been the second stitch. This one would have been the first, but it switches position. And then this one is also lying on top of that stitch. And this is where the beautiful decorative part of that comes in. So we're just going to leave those on there for a second. And then we're going to knit the next stitch. So what we've done is we've slipped two, we knit one, and now we pass the other, those slip stitches over the top. And this is just like binding off a stitch. But you're gonna do two at a time. You're gonna put your needle in from the front. I stretch it just to make it easy. If you can do it without stretching, you should, because it kind of distorts the stitch a little bit. But at this point, I wouldn't worry about it. The most important thing is that you can get your needle in without splitting stitches. So I stretch it out a little bit for demonstration purposes. And then just as if you were binding off, you slip it over the top of that one. And you can tell because I stretched it, this stitch in the back's a little bit wonky. That's okay though. That kind of thing comes out with blocking. But you can see that this stitch is right on the top and it just makes a beautiful looking ridge all the way up the top if you repeat them over and over again. We're not doing that here, but that's what happens if you repeat them up, um, up a column. The next portion of our chart is to knit three, yarn over, knit one, so let's do that. One. Two, three, yarn over, knit one. Okay, I'm going to place a marker. You should already have markers in on, at this point. But just to show you where the markers go. <clears throat> so we start over. Remember, we this is the part that we repeat. We don't include this one. We start with the red line and work our way across the row until we get to the end and then we come back to the stitch again. So we're going to yarn over, knit three, and we're going to do our central double decrease. 
as if to knit. Slip those onto your right hand needle. Knit the next stitch. And then you're going to grab these two, just like you were binding off, and slip them over the top of that stitch you just knit. And knit three. Then in this case, you're going to be Slipping your marker rather than putting them on. But that's where the marker goes. <clears throat> okay, so now we start over with the yarn over. Knit three. Then the central double decrease. Slip two as if to knit. Knit the next stitch. And slip these over the top like a bind off. Knit three. Yarn over. Remember, we're going back here. Knit three. Central double decrease. Oh, I got a split stitch here, so I'm going to fix that. So we're going to slip these two. Knit the next. You can tell I've been I've been taking this row out several times for demonstration, making sure it's right. Okay, so then you knit that stitch and then you pass these over the top. Oops, splitting again. And then knit three. Yarn over, knit one, and here we are at the end of our row and ready to work the border. So I'm placing a marker, just to remind me, and then we're going to do our seed stitch. Now when you go to block these, you're going to want to stretch this lace out so that it opens up. When you just leave it like this, you can't see the beauty of it. It's still pretty, but when you block it, it just really opens up and looks like a leaf. So the next, next row is going to be row 16. On a chart like this, when you're working the right side rows, you're going this way from left, from right to left. On the reverse side, the purl side, you're moving from this to this. We don't have to worry about that with these, um, these rows because they're all purled. So on your key, you can see that on the right side, these blank squares are knit and on the wrong side, they're purled. So just purl all the way across that row. So the pattern says to repeat this you're going to repeat this three times and then you're going to work one through seven again. 
So when you get done with row 16, you're gonna go right back to row one. Work it again, a third time, and then up to here, seven. So you can still use your book. So it says work up the rows three times plus seven additional rows and you end after row seven. And then you work your decrease row. Okay. So that is how you work this block and work the double central double decrease. And I also I'm, I'm have an alternative for you if you'd rather do this one. I think this is beautiful too. I hope that's helpful. Thanks.